going on, everybody? It's my day off, which gives me the chance to do something I've wanted to do for a long time and answer the singular greatest question that I get asked now by pretty much everybody that I see or meet, and that is, how did you lose the weight, Tim? You seem to have lost a lot of weight. Have you been kickboxing? What's going on? Yes, I lost a bunch of weight. Today, I'm going to tell you how and why and exactly what happened and uh, all of that. But first, I have to put some cigars away in my humidor because I found that my humidor doesn't have enough of what I wanted to have. I've got a ton of stuff in this thing right here. And again, I... I've told you guys about this before if you've watched the vlog channel. You can see that my humidity in here is not really like regulation humidity. Yeah, 56%. I actually have been toying around with much lower humidities lately and really, really happy with the results. So I got to put some of this stuff away and then I'm going to light up and, and take you guys through what changed. So there are a few things. Uh, the first one is Placencia's Cosecha 149. So I did not realize when I was shooting this in the humidor that there was this singular poodle hair on the left side of the screen, which is actually surprisingly hard to see from outside the humidor, but very easy to see from the film. Now I feel like I have to dust out the whole thing, but for my OCD friends out there, I did go back and get this hair and the, the subsequent spider web attached to it. Is there a spider in my humidor now? This is a cigar that I absolutely love. That's why I brought an entire box of these home. Oh dear God. Here's a uh, pumpkin spice cigar that my wife I'm sure brought here. Good Lord. All right, so I got my Cosecha 149s. Those all unwrap. So people ask me a lot about, do you store the cigars in the cellophane or out of the cellophane? Always in the cellophane. But there's nothing wrong with having the box open in the humidor. I like that. I want to see them. Now, I got some onesie twosies that I just have to have. Dunbarton Sin Compromiso. All right, this is one that I'm super excited about. This is Room 101's 13th anniversary with a pink band on it. Matt Booth slayed it with this cigar and I've been smoking them nonstop ever since he put it out. So I brought some home to stock here at the house. I'm gonna put it inside my Padron box over here. Definitely a couple of Oliva Siri V Maduros. One of my actually favorite Maduros right now. I keep coming back to that one. You're gonna notice there's a lot of Maduros in here. I'm on this like really big Maduro kick. Mexican uh, San Andreas, uh, Connecticut Broadleaf. This is EPC's La Historia, amazing cigar. The La Raña Azulejo. Eric Espinosa just keeps shitting out these La Raña cigars that are really good. Oh, there's another Oliva. Oh, sweet, sweet. And uh, Southern Draws Manzanita. I don't know if I should do that one yet, but there we go. That's gonna go down the bottom. Now I just gotta pick one and go light up. Okay, I landed on the Placencia Cosecha 149, all Honduran leaf, outstanding cigar. Something I, I've had no shortage of smoking lately because I like these so much. But there's a few things I wanted to tell you guys. I. You know, when I first started making YouTube videos, I didn't realize that like, you don't get to really make the videos you want to make. You have to make the videos that people want to watch. And that's what I've always strived to do, at least ever since I realized that that's what you need to do. And so when it comes to this topic of like, hey, Tim, you lost some weight. Like, there's a lot I wanna tell people about it, but actually not a ton that people wanna hear. Like, most people seem to wanna hear about, you know, having lost the pounds and how did I do it? What kind of exercise? People really want to hear about the exercise, even though everybody knows that exercise is only like 15% of it and so much of it is diet. So I want to take you guys through a few things. Number one, what did I eat? What was my diet like? What did the exercise regimen look like? How, what was it like doing all this weight loss and all this exercising with cigars as a part of my life? And just take you guys through the basic details and a little bit of my story, which is really what I've got to offer here. This is like, no, by no means diet advice because I don't know if this would work for everybody. Actually, I have pretty good reason to believe that it wouldn't. And I'll, I'll explain that as well. But just I'll give you a really quick oversight. Some of you guys remember it was like a year and a half ago or so. Uh, I had some some I ended up in the hospital because I had a stomach filled with ulcers, which was almost definitely the result of stress and probably lack of sleep and drinking and like just too much of everything going on in my life. And it gave me actually a tremendous advantage in that after I ended up with all the ulcers in order to heal, I had to modify my diet a tremendous amount. And so like in my mind, it was really easy to resolve. 
Like, I can't eat things the way that I used to. I can't drink the way that I used to. But, like, things kept creeping back into my diet. And then it was March of this year. Uh, I actually was on, on, my, on a date with Allison for my, for my anniversary. For married 12 or something years, 10, 11, 12 years, something like that. Doesn't matter. We were at Ruth Chris Steakhouse. I'm eating a steak. And I got this knot in my stomach that was just like what I got when I had the ulcers the last time. And I puked blood and had to go to the hospital. So I stopped eating and was like, wow. I really got to take my health a little bit more seriously. And that was when I made a huge and substantial change to my diet. I actually completely stopped drinking alcohol for almost a full 90 days. I also stopped eating pretty much all uh, sugar and processed carbohydrates. And part of this was from like the, the thing that I recommend people never do, which is seeing a short video online and then readjusting your whole life <laughs> because you saw someone mention something in a little video. It was Jordan Peterson's daughter, Michaela. She was talking about the carnivore diet and how it helped her get over some issues with autoimmune disease and like depression and anxiety. And it was immediately captured by this idea that a diet could help you do more than just lose weight and get in shape. Like that was like, wow, that would be one hell of a diet if I could really do that. So I did what I do with most things, which was a basically a half-ass attempt. I did a modified version of the carnivore diet because after all, we all like to go on the diets, but none of us really want to have the same level of strictness that any diet requires. So we call it modified. I modified the diet, which means I followed the diet, except I didn't get rid of the stuff I really didn't want to. I was eating beef, chicken, fish, and pork, almost no lamb, but I also ate as much dairy as I wanted and did some steamed vegetables as well. But truly, that was my entire diet. So as far as what I've been eating since March, it's been pretty much exclusively those things. I do have cheat meals once in a while, probably once a week or once every other week. I'll have like a cheat meal. We're all sometimes eat sugar. My daughter, she's 17 years old. She just got a job at Crumble Cookie. So I basically have to have a cheat day because she brings home all these designer cookies. It feels like an insult when she does it, but I eat them anyway. Inside the point. But I found that when I changed and started eating primarily protein and primarily meat and dairy, like it completely changed my life. I had like cravings for about three days from the time I stopped eating sugar. And then after that, barely even had hunger pains as I also, in addition to doing like mostly carnivore diet, reduced the number of calories I was consuming per day down to between 900 and 1200 calories. So right around a thousand calories a day. And that really jet propelled weight loss forward. And again, I had energy. I didn't feel hungry. I felt great. And you know, from March, until now, in March, I was 255 pounds, good Lord. And now I'm 185 pounds, but here's my official before and after picture. So you can see sort of the transition. And like, these are the kind of results that I didn't know that you could get in less than a year. Like I saw people take long, long periods of time to get to the same level that I've gotten to in just months here. So that part of it was really intense. But again, that's like 85% of it. And then there's a little bit more with, with like actual working out. Working out is a really critical part of losing weight. I think we all know that at this point. And for me, it was kickboxing, which I've been doing kickboxing on average three or four times a week. I go for about an hour. It's something that I've got time to do. So, or I actually have to make time to do it. But when I do, it's like one of the most rewarding things in the world. It's given me stamina. It's given me energy and focus. And that has all sort of equated to the weight loss part of it. But like, I got to tell you guys, that's not the thing that's drawn me to what I'm doing the most. And this is really where I lose people. And I God, I hope I don't lose you here. But like when I saw Jordan Peterson's kid, Michaela, talking about this like carnivore diet, what I heard was not that I was going to lose weight. What I heard was that I could actually improve the quality of my mind and my focus and like my life by eating differently. And it was the first thing that I started pursuing. 
And now I don't, I'm not like the guy who's like, Hey, go do the carnivore diet and you'll get well. It certainly seems like there's a, there's some substantial factors that make carnivore work. And some of that is blood type. And some of that is body composition. Gut health is an unbelievably huge and important part of it. I've completely ditched the food pyramid at this point. I'm focusing mostly on the health of my gut microbiome and like all this ridiculous stuff that I hear people talking about online and then do a little bit of research to discover like, oh my gosh, there's a lot to learn here. But these days I find myself seeking after the things I want in my life the most. And one of the biggest things that I want is peace, personal peace inside my mind. I've noticed that a lot of my thoughts are really negative. I carry around a tremendous amount of stress a lot of the time. And like, we all only get one life on this planet. Why is it worth walking around completely stressed? What thing in any of our lives causes us to feel like we should be as stressed out as we all are? Oh, I've heard that the average American doubles the amount of responsibility in their life every 10 years after the age of 20. That means at 50, you are responsible for exponentially more than you were when you were 20. And what a stressful mess. So a lot of what I've been doing has been about pursuing this like personal mental I guess, physical, spiritual health. And these days I've been asking myself this question. What are all these things I've been clinging on to for my happiness that have actually been making me miserable? And here's what they were. Sugar and processed carbohydrates, alcohol, sitting around on social media for too long, spending too much time at night, staying up late so I can have a little bit of time to myself to watch TV and do something mindless. And effectively, I wasn't engaging my mind at all. I was just letting stress kind of simmer in my mind and in my gut. And it was just overall unhealth. That's what eventually led me to stress conditions like having ulcers. And these days, I find that applying myself to a diet, applying myself to a simple mode of exercise, and even meditation has given me back so much of a life that I want that like I could never quite grasp while I was holding on to things that were dragging me down. And that like all of that stuff, like, I don't know, I guess like that would be the big thing I wish I could tell people now. If I could just make the content I wanted to make without worrying about whether or not people want to watch it. The question I would ask people is, what is the things in your life that are anchors around your neck that are dragging you down that you think are making you happy? Like I had a lot of those things more than I even realized I have, but I think that even not realizing it, all of us can identify a couple of those things. I always knew that staying up late at night and not getting enough sleep was costing me. I always knew that drinking way too much was costing me. Like, but I thought those things made me happy. And the truth is they made me miserable. <laughs> They would be fucking miserable. And when I just let go of some of those things and applied some like rudimentary common sense, healthy practices to my life, I have to say even working as much as I did before, even with more chaos going on in my life than just about ever, I think I'm happier than I have absolutely ever been. Now for people who are married to uh, spouses that are nervous about the cigar smoking, here's another thing I'll tell you. I smoke about five or six cigars a day. And I managed to lose 70 pounds in what, March to November? What is that, nine months? In about the time that it takes to grow a baby. I lost 70 pounds. I can run five and a half miles without stopping to walk anymore. And I have fights coming up in November. I'm going to, I hope to, or in December, I'm hoping to be fighting in December if I can get a matchup. But this is the crazy thing. Everybody thinks I lost the weight working out. What they don't see is when you walk into the gym and people are like, Holy shit, man, what happened to you? You're, you're like shredded now. Like all of that happened through working out, but also diet and then getting rid of things in my life that were absolutely costing me happiness and peace of mind. Anyway, I want to hear from you guys in the comments and I don't post on this channel nearly enough. And just so you guys know, I haven't given up alcohol a hundred percent. I still drink, but now when I drink, I drink once or twice a week. And when I do, I typically have a couple of drams of scotch. And that's become a drink I can really enjoy that doesn't destroy the body's, I don't know, ketosis or I, like I still don't even understand the diet or what it does. I just know that I get to eat a lot of steak. Thank you guys so much for hanging out with me again here on the vlog. I always say this. I would love to make more content here. And if I had more time, I would. But thank you for joining me here. Please subscribe. Drop a comment down below. I'll catch up with all you guys down there. See you later.